Well, we are. Okay, welcome all. This is the meeting of the Forest Lake Planning Commission. I am now calling it to order. Karen, could you please call roll? Give me one second here because I'm struggling with it on my end. Just a moment. So oh, sorry, just a moment. All right. Take a little while to get, you know, back in gear. Commissioner Young. Here. Commissioner Batty. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Commissioner Keene. Here. Commissioner Burke. Here. And Chair Gerard. In the absence of Chair Gerard, I will be um, coordinating the meeting this evening. All those who are able, could you please join us, stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have a motion, please, to approve the planning commission meeting minutes from June 9th? So moved. Okay. Second. Karen, could you please call the roll and note that I will be abstaining since I was not at that meeting. Commissioner Young. Abstain. Commissioner Batty. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Abstain. Commissioner Keene. Aye. Commissioner Brink. Aye. And that's it. Motion passes. We have before us resolution number 06 232101 affirming denial of a subdivision variance application. Thank you very much. Um, do I have a motion please to approve the agenda as it is stated for us? I apologize. I'm rusty guys. So moved. Second. Karen, once again, a roll call. Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Batty. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Keene? Aye. And Commissioner Brink? Aye. Okay, let me try this again. We have before us resolution number 06 2101 affirming denial of the subdivision variance application. Donovan, could you please walk us through this one? Certainly. Um, this was a variance application from June 9th for 7089 North Shore Trail in which a minor subdivision uh, application was before the commission. Um, and the commission voted to deny unanimously um, due to the design of the subdivision does not conform to city minimum city standards. Um, and no matter how you voted for that, um, this is something to memorialize the findings um, and to complete that process. And so it's the, you know, Staff's recommendation to approve resolution 06232101 to deny that variance application. For those watching, most folks think of subdivision as um, a large group of home, new homes that are being put together. But in this case, what we are doing is we are dividing a property or subdividing a particular property. That was the request. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, hearing none, Karen, could you please call the roll? 
Commissioner Young? Aye. Commissioner Batty? Aye. Commissioner Miller? Aye. Commissioner Keene? Aye. And Commissioner Brink? Aye. Next on the agenda, we have a variance application, 4851 217th Street. Donovan, could you start us off on this one, please? Certainly. I'd like to present the application for variance for front um, setback. Um, for Christopher Voxlin is the applicant. John and Joyce Voxlin are the owners. This is a property at 4851 217th Street. It is located in um, on the north shore of Clear Lake on 217th Street. Um, this property, as you'll see, is um, consists of this um, properties that are on the shoreline and on the uh, opposite, where there's a detached garage and a uh, single family home is on the shoreline lot. These lots do show a lot division, which it's under consolidation. Um, that's important because the proposed home does not have um, required parking on the shoreline lot. And so therefore, you know, as consolidated lots, that parking requirements can be met, you know, across the 217th street. Um, and the, the application itself um, is to locate a single family home, 14.5 um, feet from the edge of the, of the private road here. Um, the, the zoning code um, makes no distinction between public and private roads for property lines. And just to be clear, um, that, uh, and I, this was an error in the actual notice, um, the 15.3 dimension is the, the driveway dimension. So that's not the shortest dimension to um, that, that front lot line there. So it's the, the variance request is for 14.5 feet from there. Um, what's unique about um, this one, uh, or I should say, uh, you know, is unique, I guess, is the uh, accessory apartment that uh, Mr. Voxlin proposes for his aging parents who've, who've lived in this house and owned this property since 1971, as his, his narrative says. Um, and what we, what we also see here, um, this is about a, something over a 12, um, about 12 and a half thousand square foot lot. Um, the proposed impervious, um, meets code. It's 25.7 up from about 15.5% for the shoreline property. Um, the proposed home does meet the front 50 foot setback. I'm sorry, the front meaning it's lakefront, uh, the shoreline setback and 10 feet on the east and west sides. The, uh, what is um, also different about this is the amount of water that is, is, comes through this property. Um, it's, uh, you know, there's, there is a large wetland complex to the north and this is the low point in this area of 217th Street. So there's a lot of discussion um, between uh, um, you know, city public works and city engineer and Mr. Voxlin and his engineer around uh, making sure that any new construction on this lot um, does, does not you know, worsen the situation where there's been past flooding and uh, also um, you know, makes it so that his home and other homes aren't, aren't uh, impacted by any flooding. Um, as I, as I note in the, the staff memo, this, this is a concern, um, you know, and this was, this, this, um, sorry, I gotta reboot that. This, uh, area did, was, a, was an area of considerable flooding, um, prior to some 2019 work where the, where the, um, where the uh, 
prior to MnDOT um, cleaning out a ditch. Um, and our concern was chiefly that, that now that the, the ditch has been cleaned out and issues, um, it seems like that's been resolved, that we, this situation hasn't reoccurred like this since then, um, but ditches do fill back in, vegetation does fill them. And so it appears that the drainage plan that um, Mr. Boxland, Boxland's engineer has submitted um, does, is, is going to work. Um, so that we received that news yesterday. So that's kind of breaking news. And, and this morning after it's, um, Ryan, and, Ryan, the city engineer, reviewed that. Um, yeah, the, uh, what Mr. Boxland is seeking to do is to construct the home at 14.5 feet from the, the front property line. The required setback for the single family lot is, um, is 30. I've shown here in blue the, the building envelope that's, that's required for, for new home construction. Um, so you can see the home does meet the requirements on the lake side, <coughs> east and west side. However, on the, on the front setback, this, there's a large amount of the of, you know, proposed home, which, which is with, you know, encroaching upon the setback, as well as a front entry area on this northwest corner, um, which is um, just 23.6 feet from the front lot line. Again, encroaching. Um, this, is a, this is a property that I've been receiving emails regarding this project for over 14 months. Um, um, and you know, early on, um, I you know I would I did um, tell it's Mr. Voxland's father-in-law about these setbacks, and it appears to me that um, with the particularly the front entryway, um, how that does encroach upon the, uh, the the setbacks that maybe the message didn't get through, um, because what we also see is is approximately 800 square feet within this billion envelope, which is not covered. Um, which could which could be the you know the building designed to accommodate um, all the uses proposed the accessory apartment plus for uh, you know Mr. Boxland's family and um, so I'll, I'll note that um, there's lots of white area here that that could be you know part of a part of a structure without a variance and also note that the the plan commission. Um, as, as in general, doesn't try to say no to, to projects. Um, what they like to do is say yes with conditions. And a variance application is one of those um, applications where um, it, it's an application where they do say yes with conditions. And the zoning code says that the plan commission shall not approve a variance application unless it finds failure to grant the variance will result in practical difficulties for the applicant. <coughs> So that if, for instance, if the plan commission said um, made a motion to deny this, that there would be there would be practical difficulties to constructing the house that you seek to build, which is which is a reasonable use for this single family zoning district. Um, and there's there's and it's up to the applicant um, to demonstrate that 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 practical difficulty would exist. Also. It's up to the applicant to show that the um, the uh, you know the the criteria that the that the plan commission looks at also um, exists, um, and these criteria are um, that the the property owner proposes, proposes to use the property in a reasonable manner, which um, I would say they, they have. Apply the landowners due to circumstances unique to the property, not created by the landowner. Um, in Mr. Voxland's, Voxland's narrative, um, he doesn't point out any any um, unique circumstances with this property. Um, the granting of the variance will not be detrimental to public welfare or injurious to other land or or improvements in the vicinity of the land, um, nor shall it alter the essential character of the locality. I, believe that it would not be detrimental to public welfare. Um, the proposed variance is keeping with the spirit and intent of this chapter, and thus the 
the approval of the variance will not do things like increase danger of fire, increase danger of public safety, cause strange issues for adjacent property. Um, it, I don't believe it's keeping with the spirit of the, uh, if the, of the code, if this chapter, which is code, when there's, there's possibilities to redesign the, the house so that it fits within the existing and permitted building envelope. Um, and that also that the, um, I'm gonna summarize here, that the, um, you know, that these, that the, uh, I believe you covered all five. Yeah, that the the the, the play of the homeowner is not 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 created by the landowner. Um, and so at this point, um, staff recommendation is to deny is to deny on the conditions that the applicant has not provided evidence that the variance application meets the criteria for granting a variance. And the need for requested variance is created by the actions of the applicant. That have to take any questions. From the, from the planning commission. Do any of the commissioners have questions for Donovan? Mr. Keene? Donovan, <clears throat> has this house been in front of us before for a variance? Before? It has not, no. No? Because that, that, that drawing looked really familiar with that deck and stuff close to the lakes. Yeah, the, uh, well, I'll say it did receive a variance from the town, from the city, in oh. 93 um, with the, the lake house. Also, regarding the, the detached garage. <laughs> I wasn't here then. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. I believe I was. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it just looked familiar. <laughs> yes, sir. Donovan, I saw some elevations. Do we have elevations of this plan that he submitted that we could look at? Yeah. <clears throat> There's the floor plan and there's front and rear. Well, the one I see on the top left is the rear. The one I see on the bottom right is the front, I'm assuming. I believe that's the case. Top is, is lake lakeside. Right, I'm sorry. I forgot lake property is the front, my fault. The one on the bottom right is the street side then? Correct. And then could you go back to the actual layout of the floor plan one? So that front area where uh, normally there would be a garage, uh, is that still a garage or is that the, the apartment for your for the parents? That is the apartment for the parent, parents, yes. Okay. And I'm, I'm guessing someday if the parents aren't here, it's going to be converted potentially back to a garage? That's potential. Um, you know, I believe though if, if if the investment is, you know, for a, that sort of plumbing and, and fixtures, I think it's rather considerable. Um, I'd question whether it comes goes back to a garage, but nevertheless, the, the parking requirements are satisfied for this property. And where we're seeing the biggest challenge is that front setback where the apartment is, and the just the and the front uh, porch basically. Right. Those those are the. The areas that encroach into the front setback. All the questions I have for right now. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions of Donovan? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, did I hear you correctly to say that you've been working on this application for 14 months? Um, I started receiving emails in April of 2020. Okay. One more. Mr. King. So the drainage plan that was submitted to the city, is, is it acceptable or? It is, yeah, I confirmed with Ryan um, that it's the plan that he and, and uh, the project engineer um, discussed and he faithfully rendered what, you know, what the, what the city wanted for that. 
I can pull it up if you want, if we can, we can discuss no, no, it, no, but no. it okay. involves um, actually restoring a ditch that was filled in some, some number of years ago and some small drain tile put in, drain tile rather inadequate to um, receive the flows that, that were coming at the time. Um, it looks like it's drier now, fortunately, um, but so they're planning a you know, larger drain tile, but actually more ditch and actually emergency overflow down by the shoreline since the there's kind of an ice ridge. Actually, you know, there's a tire right at the shoreline before it drops to the lake level. But that's the lake level at today's level, right? It's today's yeah. level, but they, what we found um, on going there was actually there's township drain tile, uh, a culvert, you know, actually underneath the tree and underneath, um, you know, that actually was the original drainage when there was a ditch. I'm just thinking, you know, the normal uh, depth of that lake is probably a few feet lower this year now than it has been normal, normal uh, level. Yeah, that I mean, it may be, but that's that's not an issue in this course. Okay. Okay. Uh, did you did you say that there was did you there was a square footage? And maybe this is a question for the but I'm just curious what the square footage, the footprint square footage of the house is. It is some little over it's 2707 square feet. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out the area of your parallelogram there. I believe it's height of the parallelogram times one of the long one of the legs. I'm measuring 50, 80 feet of length there, which seems about right because the lot is that hundred foot bottom there, the overall lot width about a hundred feet. And then I measured 50 feet for the height of the parallelogram, which would mean that the area of that parallelogram is 4,000 square feet, plus or minus. And if the house that they're showing is 2,700 square feet, something that. So how, what I used to measure that, and this is something where the actual survey that was submitted, you know, does, <laughs> Show erroneous building envelope because it runs all the way across the road. Um, but uh, in this, I could be wrong, you know. Yeah, no, but I measured seven hundred is just a little under three thousand. So I, I didn't, you know, I know. Like if you. Your contention, I believe your contention is right that the square footage of this footprint fits within that parallel. It, uh, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out how the area of the house that they're proposing to build fits into that the area of that parallelogram building pad that fits within the setback requirements. And it looks to me, I mean, just eyeballing it, it looks to me like it easily could fit in there. I mean, did you, did you go that far? I mean, I'm just. That, I mean, that's what I, that's what I see. Okay. Yes. So we're in agreement on that. And we can just, the owner can address that. Are there any qu other questions of Donovan right now? Okay. Mr. And Mrs. Voxland, would you like to make any comments? Thank you. <clears throat> oh, first of all, um, the application is myself, Chris, my wife, Lori, and my mom and dad in the back, John and Joyce. Um, <clears throat> the goal of our variance application is to get approval to build closer to the private road than the 30 foot setback, as we talked about earlier. The private road positioning makes the lot shallower than others. 
the shallow lot and the need to add an accessory apartment for taking care of my parents in their old age are the hardships causing our variance application. <clears throat> taking care of elderly is an important issue facing our society today. We saw during the COVID-19 pandemic that high density nursing homes were not only dangerous for the spread of disease, but also caused elderly, elderly people to be lonely and isolated away from their family. I have several friends who watch their elderly family members wither in isolation and die alone. We need better solutions for caring for our elderly parents, and there needs to be some flexibility to support this movement. Some of the factors uh, that show the reasonability of our variance request. Uh, first, 217th Street meanders at varying distances to the lake shore, but generally the road location creates small depth lots. This, this is one of the narrowest distances from the lake shore, um, the, the uh, lot we're on. Um, the current structure is non-conforming to the lakeshore setback and the setback to the western property line. Our proposed structure will be, will be compliant to the lake setback as well as all neighboring properties. If something has to give, we consider the lake and the neighbor setbacks a higher priority than the setbacks to the private drive. I made a short survey of the 17 closest homes. 72% of those properties were non-conforming to the road setback, 72%, including recently built structures. Um, just down the road at the very entrance of 217th Street, there's a garage four feet off the, the road. So we are certainly not creating a situation that creates a new bottleneck. Also to address uh, what Donovan was saying earlier about the parallelogram, um, if we created a house that fit exactly in that shape, it would be a very difficult house to build. Be a, it wouldn't be square. It would it'd be, it'd be diagonal. Um, so yes, we could, we could construct a house that would fit into that shape, but it'd be sort of a strange looking house. Um, furthermore, that northeast corner of the parallelogram is the area that we need to create drainage to the lake. If we were to construct in that corner, there's no longer that drainage path. So this, the way that we've done this keeps that drainage path open to the lake, exactly like the city engineer has been looking for. Um, the third point is that we have unanimous support from our neighbors for this project. Um, if the zoning administrator's concern is related to a negative impact to the neighbors, they don't seem to share his opinion. Um, here's some historical uh, background information that was not clarified in the city report. Um, some of you may know this or some or, or not. Uh, 217th Street North is a road that's owned by the residents, was built originally by the property owners and is maintained by the property owners. We pay taxes on that acreage. It's a shared driveway more than a city road. The city does not have storm sewers, lighting, curbing, sidewalks, anything like that to consider on this property. One of the main points on the city report was related to drainage. Um, and I, I know that we've, we've talked a little bit about this and it's, it complies with the city at, at this point, but I think the history is important. This area of Clear Lake is certainly lower than some other properties on the North Shore, but our property is not in a swamp as a report would have you believe. Historically, the wetland to our North drained to Mud Lake to the west. That drainage was cut off in 1972 with the construction of I-35 and the management of that drainage moved to the Minnesota Department of Transportation. I'm not sure of the exact date, but around 1980, Forest Lake Township installed two large culverts at the outflow of the wetland area. They installed them at 891.5 feet above sea level. We noticed that this permanently rate raised the water level in that wetland. In 2018, the state was working on the I-35 construction project, as Donovan said, uh, between 97 and Broadway. During this period, the drainage, the drainage was blocked in the ditch that ran along the freeway. This drainage ditch along I-35 is the only outlet for the adjacent wetland. In addition, many acres to the north of 11th Avenue Southwest that has been heavily developed drains down to that wetland. 
When we had unusually heavy rains in 2018, the water could not flow along its normal outlet, causing the wetland to overflow to the south towards Clear Lake. The photo included in the city's report was taken during this event. I would argue that this flooding event was a temporary failure of public drainage infrastructure, not an indication that our property has unmanageable drainage. However, we've updated the drainage plan uh, to the satisfaction of the city engineer. So in summary, not only is this variance justifiable, it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Do any of the planning commission members have questions of the applicant? Um, drainage is not an issue as far as I'm concerned. I believe that that can happen built a house to completely fill I, I, that's what I believe I, I, I don't see here anything that's terribly restrictive um, along those lines you know we're Donovan said earlier we're, we're, we're trying to figure out a way to make this thing uh, work and unfortunately for us this, this private road issue isn't A make or break thing for us. We can't not differentiate between a, a public and a private road. Um, and I, um, you know, as I, I don't, you know, I don't have scale drawings here. I'm used to working with scale drawings, but I, I, I do believe that this house could be built in a rectilinear manner and fit on the site at, and have you be able to add the uh, the apart uh, the uh, uh, apartment or whatever you call it, and that it wouldn't be in a parallelogram shape? I think it could be done rectilinearly and fit on there. If if my if our numbers are right, and and I could even if I'm off by ten percent, I got to get over here. Uh, even if I'm off by ten percent on the area of the parallelogram. Let's say I'm 10% high. Let's say it's only 3,600 square feet. It still means there's 800 square feet of slop, you know, to work with, assuming you want to maintain the 2,700 and change uh, footprint of the house. So I, when I look at this, I, I, I believe that there is a way that this, the house that you want to do, it would, it would be shaped a little bit different than what you have, but I think turning some elements on there 90 degrees, uh, just just turn the two, you know, you, it's essentially the house is a, a zigzag or a Z-shaped house, you know, and if you just turn those two elements, the outside, the long, the short elements, 90 degrees, you're very, very close to having that fit on, on the site without a variance. And I, I personally think that that's what you, it's, to me, it's worth a try to see if you can't do that and come up with a house that, you know, looks the way that you you want it to look. Are there any questions of the applicant? Can I respond to that? Certainly, sir. Okay. Um, so if you look in that that top, I guess uh, it'd be the northeast corner um, of that parallelogram, that's one of the that is the key drainage towards the lake. And the more we build into that corner, the more we're pushing drainage to the neighbor to the east. Um, it's Steve Holbeck, um, great neighbor. Um, and we've been trying to deal with drainage issues together for years. Um, and the last thing I want to do is be pushing more water towards his property um, when I, I could have it run across our, our property in the proper drainage direction. Are there other questions of the applicant? We are required to hold a public hearing this evening. I'm going to now open the public hearing. If there are any folks that would like to speak on this, uh, in addition to the emails or letters that you have already submitted, um, 
please come on up. We would ask that you state your name and your address and tell us whatever it is that you want us to hear. I'm up to the dais. This one? Yes. Okay, because I saw that you've got the other mic set up. Okay, then just come on up to the dais, a big old speaking podium. Karen, is there anybody um, also that you might want to queue up that is online? Um, Commissioner Young, I don't have anybody online that is speaking. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Ron Coleman. I live at 4823 217th Street. I'm just uh, three doors down from uh, Chris and Lori and Chris want to build her house. You know, I think uh, all, all of our neighbors are just looking at everybody on our street and there's a lot of improvements a lot of people would like to do. And I think that's what Lori and Chris are doing. They're trying to improve our neighborhood. And you know, if you drive, I don't know how many of you have driven down our street. Have you met a car on our street? Anybody met a car on our street? You have yeah. to pull, you have to stop and let the car go by before you keep going, correct? Okay. Yeah, so I'm just, saying it's it's more of a driveway than it is and it's our property like chris said we do pay tax on the road itself and we maintain the road we do everything on the road so i'm not sure where that where that uh 30 feet comes from i was always confused on that being we own the road where do you where do you where do you measure 30 feet from so and if you drive if you drive down the road you'll see there's houses that are 10 feet, like Chris said, four feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 30 feet. They're all over the board. There's, there's nothing that's been uh, um, set before on any distances or anything like that. There was a house put up uh, last year that they can't park a car in front of the house. Now, I don't know how that one passed, but it's there. But they can't park, they have to park the car sideways because they can't park it full length into the driveway. So. There's, there's just a lot of things that go on on our street that it isn't a public street that that uh, that a normal public street you can measure from, I guess, because it is a private road. So. But everybody's trying to improve the, the uh, street and improve everything that's on that road. So if we could get that uh, variance, that's, I don't think it's anything out of ordinary and everybody on our road, I don't think there's anybody that's against what he's trying to do there, so. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? I'm Trudy Blake, 4887 217th Street. So three doors the other direction. Um, I'm not a public speaker. And right now I'm like shaken to be up here, but I'm so passionate about this and why we need to do this for these people. When we moved on to 217th Street, um, now nine years ago, we found the most wonderful neighborhood. It is a secret gem. And the Voxlands are a big part of that. And we've become really close with John and Joyce. And I really feel that what Chris and Lori are trying to do for their parents is such a wonderful thing. Wouldn't we all want to be able to take care of our parents? I lost my parents young, so I never had that chance, but we should all be wanting to do that. I hope my kids want to take care of me when I get, when I get to that point. So anyway, I just think that that's really, what they're doing is such a wonderful thing. And to be just, you know, 15 feet away from doing that is just, unbelievable especially when you look at the other properties like people have been saying um i mean i don't want to call out names but charles durkin is not 15 even 15 feet from the road and that house was just built two years ago so why is this you know a motion to deny i really really encourage you to vote to approve the variance and i thank you for your time Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Charles Rinke. I live at 4873 217th Street. 
I'm just two doors down to the east from the Boxlands. So I'm speaking for myself, but also my neighbor that's not here, also Steve and Nancy Holbeck. They're the ones that have had basically a, a gracious contention with the slot line since I've lived there six years. Um, you know, I'm, I'm the guy that gets in the middle, you know, like they come to me and I, you know, what's the best way to fix this? And without, you know, because they don't want to offend each other, you know, I mean, people are very gracious in the neighborhood, you know. And uh, it, 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 he keeps, I know this may not be the real deal breaker for you, the, the uh, water or the elevation, but I know he brought that up again. I've witnessed this contention and, it, and it's true. Um, Steve, Steve's house is in a low area too, and so is mine. And I was in here getting a variance, you know, six years ago with Donovan and uh, the commission was gracious enough to give me the variance because I was making an improvement because what was there was just, it really wasn't non-functional. It was so low and it was rotting out. And, you know, I had to get the variance and I had to go through the codes and get my house up. I think it was 30 some inches above the water, high water table. So um, if they can get that house up and the, that drainage, I think I don't really see an issue with it. And again, they're making an improvement to an area that has had issues with flooding in the past. And they want, they're just trying to do a good thing. And I know you guys maybe can, give them a blueprint for their home, but it's not the one they want. You know how it is, you build homes. When you build a home, you wanna build it the way you want it because you have a dream and this is, they've dreamed their whole life about one day knowing that their parents were gonna pass and they'd have to take care of them and they were gonna build this house. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm just, you know, there's a heart issue here too, you know? And I just can't see why this would not be. It's just a few feet to the road that they want to build their dream house. and. If you drive down there, there's several places. There's one house as you come in there that's not even four feet from the road. I mean, you know, and I realize, you know, laws and stuff change. But what they want to do is just going to be such a vast improvement, not just for them, but for the neighbors and everybody, because um, it, it, it has been an issue. And frankly, we all feel bad for the Boxlands because they live in the lowest piece of property there. Every time it rains like that, you just see all this water there. And here's John, you know, he's a... He's an, uh, a senior man. He's out there with water pumps day and night, pumping water out of this just to maintain a place to live. And so whatever they're doing is gonna be a vast improvement. I just can't see this driveway thing really being a major issue when you see what else has gone down there. So I understand that there's certain, you know, codes and laws with the state and city, but I'm just asking you to consider it once again that the private road issue, it, it's a, you know, we have to repair it we have to put money towards it every year. And we're, we're a community of people that love each other and help each other. And we, we're, we so want to invite them into the community to be a part of, part of who we are because we love their mom and dad and we'll probably soon love them. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Sure, I get to follow Charles. Thanks for your time tonight, Commission. Appreciate it. Um, basically, um, I'm Eric Swenson. Um, I have properties at 38 or 4839 and 4845, uh, 217th Street. So that would be right next to them, the two properties next to them. And I'm all for the building of this house. I mean, it's great opportunity to see Chris move back to the lake with his family, still have his parents there who are fabulous people, um, and uh, just, you know, have a, a whole family there again. Um, I've been there, basically our property has been in the family since 1927, but um, I uh, noticed that, you know, of the 35 properties on 217th Street, there are roughly about 27 properties that do not fit the 30-foot setback. And that's a pretty good amount, especially, you know, I mean, this comes with the parallelogram of the lots. It's hard to build a reasonable size house on a lake you know, no matter where you are. And these lots are 50 foot lots or 45 or whatever they might be. And his is 100. But to build, you know, a realistic, normal house on it is very tough. So this setback, um, this variance, I think is definitely needed 
for um, for this uh, particular house. Um, again, as a lot of them mentioned, we live on a private drive. We maintain it. We pay for it. We pave it. We kind of decide on how what the width of it is going to be. It's very narrow so that we can kind of keep our lots bigger. <laughs> so there's a lot of jetting in and out of cars and things like that. And um, we basically, you know, love that road and um, love it as a private road. Um, as far as the drainage, um, as been has been mentioned, um, you know the. The freeway was built in about 1969. There was agreement between MnDOT and the landowners on the North Shore to make sure that drainage ditch was emptied out and cleaned out on a regular basis. That was not the fact. They hadn't cleaned it out in years and years. Um, so basically over the years, vegetation grew in the ditch, raised the table of the swamp and eventually it overflowed into the street and that was a picture that you saw of 2019 or 18. Um, since then we worked with the dnr we had a meeting here at the forest lake city hall with um, the city engineer and the mindot and uh, basically got them to resurrect the ditch back down to the level that it should be since then the swamp has dropped over 16 inches now from there i don't see any possibility of that swamp overflowing in the near future or several years out i mean it took it probably 20 years to to get up to that level and it's going to take another 20 probably to get to that level again so basically the flooding that we're concerned about or the city is concerned about is basically going to be four to six houses right around the road area of um, the Voxlands area. So there's not that much water that's gonna be congregated in their property anymore. So, and basically that's all I have. Uh, appreciate your time and I hope you all vote for uh, giving them the variance. Thank you. Are there any other, any other folks that wish to speak? there are times when it is not a lot of fun to be on the planning commission um yes pardon me close the public hearing, all right please. thank you very much god i am rusty um since there are no others that wish to speak i am now closing the public hearing let me work on this um I live on a dirt road that doesn't have curb and gutter or street lights and are the other stuff so so i i understand that concept one of the issues that we are going to have to be cognizant of is that whatever we do, whether we grant the variance or we do not, that sets a precedent for the rest of the city. Under Minnesota law, whether it's a private road or a public road, if it's within the city, the rules are the same. So just because something is a private road does not mean that we should ignore or set aside without very strict requirements whatever the zoning code requires but there are re reasons for variances and before we go through further discussion is there a motion that the planning commission wishes to make make a motion here to get it on the table for discussion by the planning commission because there's some other things that i'd like to say about it but i make a motion that the variance for a request be denied do i have a second to that motion second would you like to start the discussion sir yeah, for discussion okay. okay you know this is <laughs> i'm with our Chairman tonight, I'd just soon not be on the Planning Commission um, when issues like this come up, because um, nobody's a winner. Uh, but I have, um, I've been on the Planning Commission here now for, um, I think I'm in my eighth year. 
And um, I've had my hand slapped several times because I wanted to do things that didn't uh, follow rule of law. But um, I, I think we need to sort out a couple of things here. Um, and I don't think this is the end all to end all. I, I, I personally, I've already stated, I think it's possible to build a house, a nice looking house on this piece of property and have it be the size that you would like the house to be and have it fit uh, within um, the, the building envelope that the setback requirements um, would allow. Uh, but one of the, th I, I think one of the other things that has come up here tonight um, needs to be addressed. And it's a thing that's as frustrating for us as it is for you. And that is the fact that there are dozens of, already dozens of properties on this street alone that don't conform to the setback requirements, the current setback requirements. And I think if we thought about it, all of us know that the reason for that is that those houses were built, um, most of those houses were built before the road was put in or the setback requirements were established, or they, uh, someone built a house directly over the, an existing non-conforming pad. And this, irritates the living daylights out of me, but it's possible for someone to do that. I drive by a garage every time I leave my house that is not even four feet from a very busy street. And that garage is only five years old. Obviously built long after setback requirements were established for that neighborhood. And the only reason that they could do that was because there was a garage already there that they ripped down and built a new one, you know? And I just, I personally think, I have to tell you that I think that's just the most ridiculous thing that the city allows that. I, I just, it, it makes absolutely no sense to me. I'm an architect. I do this for a living. And I, 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 I'm, I've been more often on that side of the table than on this side, I'm neither bragging or complaining. It's just a fact. So I, I know where you're coming from here, um, and I, I wish I could do something about it, but I, I do believe that there are um, ways that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. And I think you, if I can't tell you what to do, but I would certainly at least suggest that you, you know, talk to your architect about the possibility of of doing that, confirm the area um, numbers that we've talked about here tonight, and and see what um, see what might be possible uh, as far as fitting a house onto that property. Okay. Usually not. This is your once. Yes, you may. The house that we were referred that several people were referring to on our road um, is much larger square footage than what we're trying to build. Um, it is on a 50 foot lot, not a 100 foot lot. Um, it doesn't comply with the setback to the road, the lake, or either side property. And we're we're you know basically improving the setback to the lake and to the west. And yes, we, we are not compliant on the, on the setback to the road, but we're improving two other directions. And especially the parts that are, are related to the environment, getting back from the lake. I wasn't gonna say anything, but I, um, I just wanted to address the, the fact of, I know it sounds, it sounds kind of simple to say you can, you can figure out a plan in the parallelogram, but and we gave the example of the garage that's by your house. We are trying to do the right thing, and we're trying to do the right thing for a lot of people. First of all, for our neighbors, for my in-laws, to make a place where they have a separate living place and they can still see the lake, to make a main level master for ourselves so that we, at, when we get to the age where we can no longer, our two children, we, we don't have to leave this house. We don't have to change anything. So I know it seems simple, 
And that just fit it into the parallelogram, but that's the reason why we didn't fit it into the parallelogram. There wasn't a way, and then also we live on a lake. So if you're talking about a lake, you want to maximize your, your front to face the lake. So if it was a house on a, any city block, it would be a no brainer. But there's just all those little factors that make the parallelogram not, um, not the best option. Thank you. Chair? I, yes. I'd like to address the, uh, some of the non-conforming um, issues that have been referred to. Um, and just remind the, the commission that, um, you know, variances are a case by case basis. And one of the evalu evaluation criteria is not if there are similar properties, um, non conforming properties nearby. Um, and uh, I did research that the, the variance request that was granted um, at one of the properties that you've referred to. This plan commission issued a variance, you know, issued a variance for flexibilities on the east side, about five feet from the western property line and 16 feet from the, the road edge. What was built there is, is not that, at least on the road side. Um, so that is not, a, I believe, a valid argument for this to, to make before this commission when they issued a, a variance for 16 feet to that road edge. In other words, Donovan, what I'm hearing is that that, that particular one with the four feet um, was not built as the city permit, as, was not built according to the permit. As, as, was, as, as the variance was granted. I just discovered that myself. All right, other planning commissioners. Unfortunately, I have been around for a long time. And um, I re remember when, when the Planning Commission did not act in accordance with the laws of the state of Minnesota and um, with our ordinances. And not only were we sued, but we paid a very large penalty. Um, my issue is my heart is here with you. And if I vote to grant this tonight, then that means that the next variance where someone says, well, I'd, I'd like to maximize my view or I can, I, can, I can, if I have this particular layout, it will be fine. I have to grant it because I have set a precedent, right? The actions that we have here do set precedent. We have, on occasion, I, I can remember a couple of, of decks where it was, you know, if, if, if we could go on another four feet, then my view to the west and the sunsets would not be blocked and life would be good. <coughs> and three years later, Michael, I think you remember one of these. Um, well, if, if I could just go out another five feet because now my view to the east is blocked and, and I can't see the sunrises, these things tend to encroach. Um, usually when we, when we allow variances, they are due to a very steep slope or um, a property that, that was subdivided back in the township days and is entirely too small, or there is something specific about the property that does not allow any design to occur. Donovan will tell you that, that as we rewrite the zoning code, one of the things that is, that is going to be very important to me is that we allow um, mother-in-law or, or, or daughter dwelling units, uh, accessory units. So that's not my issue here. Now that you fix the drainage and there will never be a pipe there and it will always be a ditch, which will be a requirement of, of would be a requirement of this. I can understand the drainage issues. My concern is the precedent that we're setting. However, um, I know that this was done for discussion. Are there any other comments from any of the planning commission members? Yes, sir. We want to help you really do. 
and I think you're really close. I don't think we're going to approve this and it, that the way it is. I mean, if you could adjust some footage, we can't tell you what to do. But if you could adjust some footage on that garage or on that back porch, and maybe we're only looking at a five foot variance versus almost a 20 foot variance, you'd probably have better luck. Not saying for sure. There's a range in? in no, there's not. Well, that's so what you just how said. Do we, how do we run at that? If, if 15 feet is not enough, where, where, do, we, where do we go for? Well, yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I can't answer that question. Um, I, I don't. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, we look at. Um, you know, this is a new built house. I mean, you're building from scratch. You have a lot of footage to work with, yet your plan is way out of line with the building area you have. And you know, there's not really a what we call a reasonable hardship. And that's really what we look at in variances. Is, is there some sort of a reasonable hardship here? Move closer to the lake. That's less important. No, you won't. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't comment, but. Um, we all empathize. I mean, I, I, I totally get what you're trying to do. Um, I, looking at your plan, I'm a builder. I see a lot of things that could be done. But I know it's not what you want. Um, I just don't see this getting approved this way, in my opinion. I, I was just going to echo just a couple of things. The, I, this is such a tough situation. Um, I, you know, I agree with uh, pretty much everything that's been said tonight. Uh, out here and um, the precedent setting thing is just so difficult because um, this time it all of a sudden it happens, uh, you know, around the lake somewhere else. And um, what do you do? Sometimes your hands are kind of tied in these situations and um, it, it's not fun for us. It's really not. Um, but I, I do think um, bring what uh, Kevin had said and also what Dennis said, it looks like there could be a possibility I was looking at another house here, just a few houses down that looked like it was kind of a little bit more in that that area. But um, again, I, I'm not a builder, so I don't really know what will be the best option. But um, unfortunately, I'm a little constrained as far as what the variance allows us to do. So that's because where I'm at. Donovan, if this were to be tabled this evening instead of denied, they could come back with a different plan without paying the monetary penalties of a new plan, correct? Correct. There, there's the, there is the, the 160 day rule involving when planning commission does need to make a decision on. So it's a, it's a limited extension that's possible. It, it, it would be it would be an, an ex if there was a mutual agreement between the property owner and the city to extend that more than 160 days that is definitely possible oh certainly that is something i could we, we could potentially do for you um, it, it does not, not make anybody happy. Um, I do not believe that your variance request would be approved this evening if I call for a vote right now. On the other hand, if we were to table, that would allow you with mutual agreement to go back and look at some alternate designs without the monetary penalty of, of a second request. Yes, sir. Um, how do we have a constructive give and take so that I can work with the city and find out what the, what the boundaries are 
of what is acceptable. Because what it seems like is, nope, try again. Nope, try again. And that's not constructive. That, that takes a lot of time and money. And what I'd really like to find out is, can we sit down together? And if there's some flexing uh, between the city and, and our architect, we can find solutions. But I think what I'm really looking for is, is a conversation, not, uh, not sort of a, a wall. And then we turn in a, the next plan and no, you know, as, as Mr. Miller said, um, you know, maybe there would be some flexibility, but I don't know how much. I don't know where, where to draw the line. So what I'm, what I'm really hoping for is a way to work this out so that when, when we meet the next time, um, there's not a surprise on either side. And we all know that this, this is an acceptable plan to the city and it's an acceptable plan to us. Well, I'd sure like to believe that that's possible, knowing the personalities that are involved on this side. But I, I think that you could go forward from today with reasonable expectation of an open and honest con conversation about this that wouldn't that wouldn't be putting the impetus completely on. I mean, we can't. <laughs> what's we might like to do it can't design it for you, but we certainly can talk about possibilities. I cannot tell you in advance that I will, I will vote in favor of whatever you come back with. Looking at past history here, it would not surprise me if, if going back on the lot to not all the way across, but to some of the existing house footprint. Um, since that was was allowed before, that may be that may be an option. I understand the challenge with cost. I understand your desire to be building as soon as possible to take advantage of this building season. Um, I I completely understand that. Um, You're also planning to put our kids in Forest Lake High School next year. And um, that was, that's also one of the timing factors we're looking at. One of the beauties of living in Minnesota is that you don't have to live in the district to have your kid go to a school in the district. Um, take advantage of that. Um, <clears throat> Are there any other motions that planning commissioners would wish to make at this time? Clarification, Commissioner Young. Yes. The, um, I, I think a motion was made um, by Commissioner Batty and I think a second by Miller on denying the request for variance. So by Kuhn. However, a motion to table would supersede ta that. Yep. I don't know if we need to withdraw. Okay, I didn't know if we needed to withdraw the. It, it would not. It would not be a withdrawal. We could okay. have a motion to table. Um, but that is not that is not my motion to make. I'll make a. I'd, I'd make a motion to table. I would second that. All right, that is a non-debatable motion, and. I am going to put a condition on it and there, there's going to be, it will be in the record of this, this meeting that, that we're doing that with the understanding that the 160 day requirement would be waived so that we can find a solution. Do so do I, all right. But, but what, what we have is, I also have to be in compliance with, with all the other state laws. The 100, it's the 60 day rule. 60 day it's rule. Okay. How quickly can we get back on a, when we have something, how quickly can we get back on an agenda? We meet the second and fourth Wait, Wednesdays heard? of the month. Okay. okay. Two weeks before the meeting. Donovan, could would it be possible 
to shorten the advance time since much of the work? Yeah, what I mean is that usually the, the required um, submittal time is 30 days in advance of the meeting. I, I believe two weeks is proper here, that, you know, given the amount of information we already have in advance of the meeting instead of 30 days. Can we make that a week? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, well, you gotta, I'm, uh, not, you gotta, I'm sorry, you I'm not trying to, to be do, rude. I'm just time to do your diligence. We, we are, yeah, we are. We already have architecture plans. So, I mean, to meet with architect because we thought this was going to get approved and we we're going to do it tomorrow. So, we have our plans. So, we will ask Donovan to make all haste in review. <laughs> And if I have to make the same personal request of Ryan, I will do so. All right. Okay, Karen, could you please call the roll? Again, that is a non-debatable motion. Yep, just for clarification, I have a motion to table the request for variance from Commissioner Batty. Was that seconded by Commissioner Miller? By Commissioner Keene. Keene? As the, the original motion was seconded by Mr. Keene. Sorry, I'm having a hard time with seeing people here on my end. Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Batty. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Keene. Aye. And Commissioner Brink. Aye. Thank you. Please work closely with Donovan. He'll come up with a solution. Good luck. Our next agenda item is a minor subdivision. Uh, it would be Cedar Grove. Donovan, can you start us off on this one, please? Certainly. I'd like to present the minor subdivision application for um, on behalf of Mark Smith, the applicant and owner, seated here on, on your right. Um, Welcome back, uh, sir. Well, with his, with oh, his, yeah, uh, right. <laughs> with his best friend. <laughs> right. Um, and uh, I like to. Um, so this is actually a minor subdivision to create three lots in total. Um, no, no, uh, no um, public infrastructure is is um, is uh, proposed with this. It's located at the intersection of West Broadway Avenue and 232nd Street. Um, this uh, parcel is actually um, contiguous with a parcel uh, Mr. Smith owns across, uh, rather, I think it's 39 acre parcel across on the south side of Broadway Avenue um, that was the subject of a, a, a zoning map amendment uh, to, to um, amend the zoning map to turn the whole property to MXR1 from the, the highway business district. Um, and so taking advantage of that tonight, Mr. Uh, Smith is proposing that um, three lots be created um, on this property. Their size is conforming to the MXR1 standards of uh, 80 feet wide and 12,500 feet, um, or I'm sorry, 15,000 feet in area. The, um, the, the property, there is public water and sewer in 232nd Street. The, um, also accompanying this, um, this lot line adjustment is, I'm sorry, this minor subdivision is a lot line adjustment um, where Mr. Smith is in discussion with Ms. No Novak, who owns the property um, next door at 4535 232nd Street, which is the subject of a, something later on the agenda, um, um, in order to create um, and facilitate making these three lots. Um, the, it being a public I mean, you know, county road here on the south, um, there is an additional right of way that is, is re re requested um, by the county. 
um, is part of their comprehensive plan. It's a 75 from centerline um, dimension that we are we learned about with the Timber Ridge 2 um, project. Um, the, uh, you know, it's the, you know, there's, there's a quite a bit of grading that's being proposed to create these, these lots um, shown on this grading plan. Also shown on, there's also a utility plan uh, and we see proposed water and sewer connections in this line um, and they, where they meet the street. The, um, the city, however, um, engineer has a concern that the, um, based on the submitted plans, there's inadequate sewer cover on the, on the, for this third lot, lot number one is labeled here. Um, we're approximately, um, well, I think there's been some discussion around what exactly is that, um, whether it's 6.2 or six feet um, of cover for this sanitary line, which is our main concern on this. City standards have it at 7.5 feet to eight for um, adequate cover for sanitary sewer line. This is a two inch service line. Um, record plans do show across the street, there is a, a insulated pipe, sanitary sewer service line again, that's approximately, I believe it's a little over four feet deep. Um, that was built over some, some 30 years ago. Um, the city does not have that standard now. Um, and the standard is that 7.5 to eight. Um, I, I can pull up something from the city engineering standards that has eight is the, uh, the, the sewer clean out um, at, at the property line that required depth. Um, and so with this, um, city is requiring um, with the subdivision the dedication of five and 10 foot drains utility easements along the property boundaries. Um, the lot line adjustment um, is something that uh, um, we've not completed. It, it has a staff review for that. Um, and if the, uh, if the plan commission makes a motion to approve this, the uh, you know, condition approval would be the success, successful completion of the lot line adjustment to allow for the, the easternmost lot, this lot three, um, to be created, as well as a uh, document recorded um, with lot one that, um, to, to go run with the property, that um, sanitary sewer line is at risk for freezing in the winter and the city's not responsible for that. Unfortunately, um, the city does get calls for frozen sewer lines. Um, a homeowner won't know whether it's under city uh, in the trunk line under the city street um or on the private property um and um and for that um the staff recommendation is that the uh, plan commission adopt the findings of fact that uh that the subdivision does not conform to the minimum standards with relation to adequate sewer depth for one of the lots uh, recommend to the city council denial of the minor subdivision um, due to the following conditions. The subdivision does not conform to minimum city standards with relation to adequate sewer depth for one of the lots. Without an approved lot line adjustment, one lot has inadequate width. That's, this, that's the state of that lot line adjustment at the moment. Um, it doesn't have to be permanent, but the uh, staff does feel strongly and we've um, had many conversations with Mr. Smith and his engineer around um, city standards and that's something that um, needs to be adhered to in this situation. Um, in my conversation with city attorney, um, asking perhaps if um, the plan commission could make a, you know, pass a motion to allow for two of the lots, um, you know, recommendation of approval. And the city attorney said that this was the proposal and um, it really is something that the High Commission can't approve what they'd like to approve, but they have to actually, um, if so desire, if you um, make a motion to, to um, approve, ask to be for, the, for, the, for this project or deny um, for the project as well. 
Do any of the Planning Commission members have questions of Donovan regarding this application? Um, you said there, were, there was many conversations. What were the conversations? I mean, what was the feedback then for? We went through a fit, few iterations. Um, initially, um, Mr. Smith submitted a plan. Actually, it was a major subdivision plan, which involved raising the road um, so they could, he could get adequate sewer depth. Um, and um, we, you know, we weren't sure at that point if, if that worked. Um, it was also a situation where um, it was about 310 feet of, of linear road, actually. Um, so it was a large thing. We weren't sure about all the all those impacts of that around drainage, um, new culverts, new ditching, that sort of thing. Um, but as the conversation went forward, um, Mr. Smith did reach out to the neighbor to the east, um, Ms. Novak, and they, uh, they came to agreement where he could gain, I believe it's 20, you know, 20 feet of lot um, in order to just fac facilitate, yes, 20 feet in order to facilitate um, uh, facilitate the creation of, of, of three lots. And that's what you see before you. This is not another one of these cards before the, before yes, the horse. Yes, it is. It. yes, it is. Yes, it is. I am so sick of these. Two nights or two, two plan. It's not your fault, but two planning commissions in a row. We get this. <laughs> so, is there not another way to skin this cat? Um, is that a, can't that a rhetorical question? <laughs> yeah, it's that's a colloquialism. Um, is there not another kind of easement or something? I mean, it seems like we're so close here to making the sucker work. Why can't? Is there? I mean, I see that they've canted the. Um, I printed this out so I can see it, but. Um, I mean, is there something in city ordinance about um, the sewer? Uh, I mean, can, couldn't there be an easement on the for the sewer for lot one to cross through lot two? Um, um, or is that not a? Mr. I know Bat it's probably not yeah. good. Uh, uh, no, it, it's no, it's not. We've we've run into this problem with water lines in the old section of the city, yeah. where we have a couple of water lines that are city water lines that are actually going be beneath someone's home. Uh, I know I, exactly where they're at. Yes, and I think that you also remember another sewer line that goes through the middle of a property. Um, so that and 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 our engineering standards requiring yeah. depth of sewers are. Do have the effective ordinance so how how close are we here um we've thrown a lot of numbers around i think we came at um six point, um i have to i have to look maybe i can or look that within, up it's 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 within, within a, a couple right. feet but Eight that's inches. the that's at the water line that's the crown of the road the road dips to the side yeah yeah you know I which know. further outside the right of way so it's you know that's kind of the um um you know that's so the problem is this but the problem is the sewer line is it not it's not the water line can't you just bury the water line as deep as it needs to go and yeah it, it is just it is the sewer, sewer line, line that's the correct. issue and then here, right it being a two-inch service line um there's often you know no one's home there's not a lot of flow there and so it's much more so what is it a forced main if it's a two inch is it Oh, it's, a gravity line. Is, it's a certain no this it's the, we're talking about the service line the trunk lines in the in the street no no i understand that but a two inch line a two inch sewer line from a house that's what ryan said yeah so the, what are we doing a grinder pump here or what you got to do something in case which sewer lines don't work for most houses So Mr. the problem King, is that 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 we don't have enough coverage for the sewer. That's that's what this boils down to right. here. 
Mr. Kane. Uh, Donovan, number five, the design of the subdivision or the type of improvements will conflict with easements of record or with, this is my, where I have a little problem here, is the easements established by judgment of a court. So is there is there something going on with this property uh, with the courts yet or? Um, those you... are our standard, Mr. Keene, those are our standard um, one through. Oh, okay. All right. It, it, it's, it's not specific to this. Okay, I, I, I was wondering if this particular. It's any of the no. following findings. No, that's that's just a lifting up from code around okay. the criteria, you know, okay. for denial if, you know, a motion is made. Do I have other questions of Donovan? I guess I'm just confused. Um, so you were just saying to uh, Mr. Batty that the sewer line that would feed these homes is two inches in diameter? I believe that's what Ryan told me. Is, am, I, am I being incorrect? Almost impossible. They're, four, they're always four inches. No, no, Sorry? Four inches. Four inches, they're always four, four. inches. Four. Okay, four. I, I think okay. Four. it's four, but, but it doesn't, um, I believe the concept might, you know, I might be wrong about dimension, but the, I am wrong about the dimension, but the, uh, but the, um, it's the depth. It's just, a, it's the flow isn't this, you know, I mean, if it was like a, a trunk line where there's, you know, many, many houses feeding into it, it'd be different, but they're much more susceptible to, to freezing when they're, you know, simple, no, simple service line. No, and is there, and you talked about raising the road and that was ruled out? No. Um, you guys said no. Huh? You guys said no way. That, that was what Ryan I wasn't said. a part of that conversation, okay. but I guess. From an infrastructure point of view, raising the road would have, it would have serious implications for the longevity of the road, uh, especially in a freeze thaw climate um, mm -hmm. where you've got it raised up. Um, it, it creates other infrastructure problems. And of uh, not saying this is something, but you couldn't use some sort of a lift station and bury that line deeper? Have a lift station for those homes there? You would be requiring a lift station for a single house. And I would almost guarantee that we would be looking at a variance. Right. Are there any other questions of Donovan before I open the public hearing? Then at this time, um, well, I, I take that back. Mr. Smith, did you have anything that you wanted to say? Um, did, Madam Chair, Commissioner, do I say it during the public hearing or do you want to hear it from now? Now, if there, there are things that you want to say that might inform the public hearing. Madam Chair, uh, Bill Griffith, I'll also be testifying on behalf of the applicant. Yes, sir. Madam Chair, Commissioners, um, Appreciate you being back in person. First of all, it's great to have face to face. Those TV screens that were just driving me crazy. So I'm happy we get to see you face to face. Um, I'm, we're back again. I know last time we were together on on this property was about seven months ago, and at that time the city approved this property being changed from a commercial zoning to a residential zoning, and it's actually a low to medium density zoning, which allows three to six units per acre. Now this is a two acre, two and a half acre piece. So even if you take out all the, right away I have to give up for both Broadway and for, I still have an acre and a half of land there. And I'm only asking for three lots on an acre and a half where we really could have four and a half to up to nine units based on what we were telling the Met Council we were doing with this property and what we were you know, using the property for. So three lots is, in my mind, is very, very low impact compared to what is actually zoned for and what it's approved for. Um, both. Bill and myself are just like trying to figure out why staff is fighting this so hard because when the sewer was put in, it wasn't 30 years ago, it was actually in 2003 when the sewer was put in that street. And it was done at that time because um, Brueggemann Homes was doing a development on the north side of that street with 180 homes. 80 of those homes were supposed to drain into the sewer at that manhole that's three and a half feet deep and the other stuff was supposed to go down Everton. But that's, and I actually had called the um, um, Paul Hornsby who was the city engineer at the time who designed that, built that, and said, what is um, Ryan, who used to work for him, what is Ryan having a problem with? You know, we insulated that pipe out there. We have stubs that are insulated going to the properties to the north. 
I don't understand insulating is a, a standard, a, a very common practice to do that when you have a pipe that's a little shallower, you know, there's no doubt if you were doing a new subdivision, you have to have the seven and a half to eight feet, but this was done 18 years ago, same time I bought the property or when I bought this property. And at that time, that standard wasn't there. When you had a pipe that was lower, you insulated it with um, styrofoam. And there's actually, if you go to Dow Chemical or the different insulating companies, it tells you just how to insulate city pipes, you know, how much you need for how shallow the pipe is. And at six feet, which um, this is what we're showing, six foot two, that's, you're not gonna, you need minimal insulation compared to what you would need with the, at the manhole where it's only three and a half feet. Um, he also mentioned there was actually three places he knew in the city that had um, shallower pipe than that, even in the city where it's three to four feet manholes. And again, they've insulated, they've even insulated the, the lids of the uh, manhole covers to make sure that the cold air wasn't getting to those pipes. Um, one other thing about, you know, the water that's coming out of that four inch pipe, yes, it's not, a, it's not always coming out, but when it's coming out of a house, it's coming out at least at 53 because it's cold, cold water, it's as cold as it's gonna get. And usually it's, if it's a shower or a sink, it's gonna be 60, 70 degrees. And it only has to, you know, it races out to that uh, main line and right off the bat, it's at eight feet deep before it goes around the corner. So it's not freezing at six feet. Um, to, in my mind, that seems like it's, um, every, every contract that I deal with out there, that sewer contract, they've done, those, they've done those shallow services before and a lot shallower than this and insulation always works for those. So I don't know why it's being turned down just for this shallow um, connection. Originally, I did have a four foot seven. I, I wanted to kind of now go back to, I had a four foot seven connection originally, which is almost the same as the one that's serving the temple across the street. Um, but they, had a, they weren't happy about that. That's when I did contact um, Ms. Novak and say, would you be interested in working something out here? Because that way I would be able to shift my home further to the east and it actually allowed me to flip the driveway so that gave me more of an angle to get farther down the sewer line and get that to that six feet. Um, so that was one of the reasons for contacting Ms. Novak. Also, it re required less fill when we were moving up, up that way because it, it's the road's climbing and the sewer's dropping. Um, so anyhow, that's the, the, our density there seems way lower than what it should be. I think we've done a lot to make sure that we're not gonna have problems with the sewer on these lots. Um, it's, it's a common practice to treat these lots this way. Um, I guess that would be my main thing before your public hearing starts at this point. Yes, sir. Madam Chair, uh, commissioners, thank you for the opportunity to address you this evening. It's also nice to be back in person. Um, I represent Mark Smith. I've represented him for about 30 years. Mark is a very practical builder developer. Uh, he works with cities. He comes in, he works towards practical solutions. In this case, he looked at a number of opportunities to develop a three lot subdivision. As he said, that's on the low end of density uh, that could be allowed on this property. Uh, what you have in front of you this evening is a essentially a practical three lot subdivision. I say that because you have existing infrastructure in the street. It was constructed some 20 years, not quite 20 years ago. And so you don't have the luxury of kind of jerry rigging you know, the system to work. You've got to deal with what you have. And so for the want of uh, about a foot or maybe a little over a foot of, of dirt providing insulating properties, uh, you've got a subdivision that's ready to go. You've got a neighbor who's gonna benefit from the sale of the 20 feet because she'll be able to connect to utilities. Um, that's part of the arrangement. And so there's benefit to the neighbor, there's benefit to the city of a three lot subdivision versus a two lot. It's more homes, it's more rooftops, it's more tax base. And we're looking at basically a foot of clearance, which can be mitigated, as Mr. Smith said, through reasonable means through insulating the pipe. And so what we're asking you to do tonight is approve this with the condition that we satisfy the technical requirements for providing the service and with the condition that we complete the lot line adjustment. Those are two reasonable conditions. And so when the city's looking at, you know, how to approve development in their city, uh, it's not unusual that you have technical conditions of approval that have to be satisfied by the applicant before we can move forward. For whatever reason, and you know, again, uh, reasonable people can differ, for whatever reason, your city engineer has taken a high line on this uh, depth question, even though it's been satisfied in other locations in the city. Again, as Mr. Smith said, if you were coming in with a brand new, you know, 200 lot subdivision or even 20 lot subdivision, certainly, the connections from the road to the to the subdivision would have to be provided at strict standards, but it can't be done here. And for want of a foot or a foot and a half of clearance, 
uh, which can be fully mitigated, it seems a little bit ridiculous, if I can use that word, it seems a little bit ridiculous to have 30% of the subdivision deleted uh, just to satisfy that, that strict requirement. We know that um, the city standards, engineering standards do provide for mitigation, um, that this wouldn't be the first time that somebody proposed something that wasn't strictly conforming to the city's engineering standards, but mitigation is provided and that's the key here. So uh, we ask you to approve the subdivision with those two conditions. We believe that they are reasonable technical conditions that can be satisfied before this project moves forward. Thank you. Any commissioners have questions of the applicants? Um, you know, I'm looking at the plan and um, do you have any uh, landscaping uh, uh, thoughts, uh, berm thoughts, uh, anything like that, that should, that you have, a, that's associated with these lots at this point, or? And I'm sure commissioners, yes, on the um, landscape, there's actually that, why I call it Cedar Cove is that if you've been by the site, there's lots of cedars on that property. And I'm actually hoping the smaller ones that we can maybe transplant a bunch of them and do some work on the outer edge along Broadway there to protect the people that are living there um, from the noise and the sound and the visibility of the road. Um, and we'll we definitely, if it doesn't work, if the trees don't survive, then we'll have to add some, we'll add some more um, trees along that um, buffering from Broadway. And is your intention to keep the corner somewhat open for visibility? Um, the, the corner, are you talking on the north? Turn off of Broadway onto 32nd? Yes. There's actually a cluster of trees there that um, are already existing, there are a bunch of cedar trees on that corner. So I'm, I'm actually hoping we don't have to monkey with those or touch those, we can leave those alone. I, I've seen power lines there. That, is that run right through the property? Um, there is an overhead line that is kind of throwing me off too. I have a call in the connections to try to find out why they didn't follow the radius. Well, I know why they didn't because it was cheaper this way, but if, if they're willing to move it <laughs> to follow the radius of um, Broadway, they basically took a shortcut across and went to the shortest distance to get to 232nd. Um, they won't interfere with the homes, but at the same time, I don't think people want to have the view of the power lines um, out their window. Any other questions of the applicant? Um, it's just a, a minor point here. Are these one foot contours on here? Like it's such a small drawing, yeah. I can't. Yeah, Madam Chair Commissioner. Yeah, those are, I know it throws me off too. They are one foot. That's why it looks like there's so much, so much climb, but they are one right. foot. So usually you'd have half those lines, but he wanted to show what, make it more visible on what, what they were, but they so are. So and having an infiltration uh, basin of this size, that I'm assuming it's not that size, just or that's that size for a reason. If I could interrupt, um, if if there was a uh, approval, a staff condition would be um, that there be individual rain gardens on the properties outside of the uh, proposed uh, county right of way, so that there's no public infrastructure created, no no regional stormwater ponds for city future city maintenance. Mr. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners. The only reason we have that showing at that side is that was what Comfort Lake regulations asked for. If the city is able to work with them and come up with some these rain gardens, it would make my customers or buyers much happier as well. I think sometimes they just worry that when they're individual ponds and individual lots, pretty soon they just they get mowed and filled with leaves and pretty soon they're gone. So that was what Comfort Lake asked for. I'm all for getting rid of that or having such a, you know, there's no need for that. If it's no need for it, I'm happy to get rid of it. That piece is not our decision. Yes. Were, were there other questions of the applicant? We do have a public hearing this evening. Uh, I am now opening the public hearing. If there's anybody here that wishes to comment. And Karen, I don't know if we have anybody potentially online that may be interested in commenting? Commissioner Young, I do not have anyone. Madam Chair, can I speak again? And if, or do you want when, to say, when we have closed the public hearing. Okay. Is there anybody that wishes to speak? Would you like to? Uh, good evening. My name is Stacy Novak. I live at 4535 235nd Street. I'm the neighbor that's directly to the east of the property that Mr. Smith is considering putting in his project. And 
I, the only thing I really want to say tonight is I hope that you guys do consider approving this. The road, first of all, building the road up, I feel would benefit the neighborhood greatly as the road has been kind of in poor condition since I bought my house there about six years ago. If we get a chance to fix that road, that would be outstanding. There's a lot of traffic on that road with the school in the morning and I feel that would benefit everybody greatly and not only with the road, but to take care of the aesthetics of the neighborhood and improve that lot that's sitting there blank would be a nice appeal to everybody in the neighborhood and bring some good neighbors in. So I, I just ask that you approve this project and he's been so nice to work with. <laughs> Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak about this? Going, going. We'll now close the public hearing. Is there a motion that the planning commissioners? Yes, sir. Could I ask a clarifying question Absolutely. first? Donovan, could you comment on, you made a comment about the rain gardens for each lot and then I'd like, um, if I could, I'd like uh, Mark to uh, address, address that as well. Can you explain what you meant by that? So, um, you know, as, as um, Commissioner Young, um, you know, appropriately um, stated, the, um, you know, stormwater permitting is through, through the Comfort Lake Forest Lake Watershed District. Um, but um, where the city has an interest in that is that we, uh, the city w would not, will not accept, um, you know, regional stormwater ponds. And actually it would, it would be creating public infrastructure that would, somehow they would kick this out of the minor subdivision um, application pathway. Um, so it, rain gardens is, is kind of a catch all phrase here, but basically means stormwater management to, to meet, you know, individual stormwater management areas to meet, you know, the Cover Lake Forest Lake Watershed District rules, which basically, you know, pre-treatment of 25% of a, of a one inch rain event is essentially their rule. Um, and, uh, so it's, so it's more of a, it's more of a detail, but that just, that is important in this case that, uh, this, the city won't accept any regional stormwater pond, which as we usually would with subdivisions. So that wouldn't be something we would need to address. That would be something that's addressed if it was approved with the city as a condition to improve the lots. Correct. Okay. Yes, Donovan. Um, I'd like to address a, a couple comments. Um, from uh, Mr. Smith and Mr. Griffith. Um, the, uh, I guess the first thing, and this is something that I don't, um, you know, I, I represent staff here um, in, this, in uh, this case, you know, there's kind of, I'm the only player you see on the field. There's a backbench of, you know, decades of experience behind me. That's also, I'm, I'm speaking for trying to represent their views as well. I'm sure I'm not doing as nuanced as they do. Um, I can characterize some of the more the conversations we had regarding staff and the standard for the uh, um, sanitary sewer service lines um, being a, a certain depth. Um, the the new standard is eight feet, and that's you know for new subdivisions. That's where the city service line. Um, that's where the city infrastructure comes in on a property. Um, the you know when Ryan says you know seven and a half to eight feet cover is required. Um, he's, he's understanding that there's going to be some variation. There's going to be situations where um, there's going to be new hookups and you know, there's, a, there's a bit of variability there. Um, something that is, the city is really conscious of is when there's a road, there's not a mantle of snow for insulation. Um, and so when that, um, the sewer line depth is not adequate, the city does go out and have to thaw out these these sanitary sewer lines. Um, I'm familiar with one on Harrow Avenue, right at the at the end of, just north of the, the church there, the Jesu Church um, of Minnesota, and it's about a five foot depth, and they have to go out there and and, and thaw it, you know, for the homeowner. Um, and uh, the city in this case, I mean, obviously there are situations as I just mentioned that do not meet these standards. And it's the reason this the city feels staff feels strongly about this now um, is the reason because of those situations where they've not held the standard and, or there's been built to a different standard and 
they pay the price. Um, and uh, so I feel like it's not only the staff I talk to, you know, the, the, the public work superintendent or the city engineer, it's also representing the staff who have to go on site to, to mitigate the impacts when the, when the standards aren't there. Um, and uh, also I wanna mention that um, regarding, you know, city and zoning, you know, the, basically zoning densities aren't a promise. They're simply a, an allowance and we have a minimum density that we wanna have for efficiency of city infrastructure and also meeting the, the minimum densities for the comprehensive plan. Um, but, and when we put city, city puts infrastructure in, it's not, um, it's seeking to serve the, the adjacent lots, but it's no promise that all, you know, the future development is adequate. I mean, future development is proposed is, and can be adequately served. I'm um, gonna feel like that's a situation we have here um, where the, the infrastructure is, is what's there and, and it's up for the um, applicant to propose something that, that conforms to city standards. Any questions, follow-up questions for Donovan? Do I have a motion from the Planning Commission? I'll try a motion here. That's okay. I actually would like to make a motion that the City Planning Commission adopt the findings of fact and approve the proposed minor subdivision um, of the existing lot located at the intersection of Broadway Avenue uh, into three lots due to the following two conditions. One, successful completion of the lot line adjustment, and two, satisfying the technical requirements of completing the sewer uh, the service for the insulated sewer line at a minimum of six foot depth. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that motion. Okay. Planning commissioners, discussion? Yes, sir. Um. Got another geometry issue. <laughs> I don't know if you were here for the last one, but they were. that's what that came down to. Um, I mean, you don't have to answer this, but I, I'm just wondering if there is any way physically with, you know, I understand fall and distance and, you know, rise to run and that, all that sort of sort of thing is there there is no way under any circumstances that you can angle a line from lot number one to some point on the um, on the main there that would allow you the fall that you need and the cover that you need and the chair commissioners if i can answer that question yeah, I'm, I'm asking yeah, yeah um we definitely could snip, I don't, if we start making angles down the street, if we could make the frontage of the lot number two, maybe clip off that corner, we could start that angle a little steeper towards, we would actually be coming up where they are at the Lao Temple, where they're connected at seven foot two or so, we could get a lot closer to that point. So we, we would probably gain close to a foot, but then all of a sudden we're gonna have, need a variance or something because we have a lot that's got a clip, I don't know if you'd allow a clip corner, but at the very front of the lot up against that's the street. Problem. No, so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to, the angle might be too tight. I mean, is it possible? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We definitely could sure try to get farther. At some point we're going uh, parallel, uh, but it gets too long, but um, that's what, you know, the insulation should definitely be more than adequate. Like I said, the, the Lao Temple, both ends of it, they have a three and a half foot. And yes, I can see their concerns, but it's a common practice. It's not an unreasonable thing to insulate and do a good job of it. Um, and we are cleaning up some other things in that street that I think we're actually helping the situation. You know, we, there's a stormwater problem. Um, I don't want to open a can of worms here, but when that west side of states was built, I know that was one of the comments in your thing, all that stormwater runs off, all those houses runs onto the street and this dumps onto my property, untreated and uncollected. And we were going to fix that when we're doing our project. And um, so we've done some things to make that work. Because right now they're just dumping water on our property. We're also like, 
Miss Novak, we're going to get her hooked up. She's already had well issues and septic issues, and you know, part of our trade with her is to help her. You know, why we're the trade works is she needs to be connected or wants to be connected to the city sewer and water, and right now she's not, and it's been a problem. We're going to clean that up as part of this deal. So Miss Novak, um, who's been a, a a good neighbor there, um, so it's a win-win. A lot of things happen to the city. The city gets some connections that aren't there right now, so you're not, you know, we get rid of some septic systems that are there. Um, and as well as cleaning up the stormwater issue that's there. I, mean, I think this is a great project, it helps the city. And yes, we have to insulate it, but it's done done. And my guy that does that stuff for us, he does a lot of them and I know they'll do a great job. And, and the guy won't be out there um, heating that, you know, at six feet, that's a lot different than five feet or even four feet. I mean, that, it, that doesn't take long, but six feet, that's a, you can put a lot of insulation in there and keep that pipe, you know, plenty warm. Sorry if I, I got way off track there, but that's your question. Other comments, discussion from the Planning Commission? So just to clarify, my understanding that that is a viable option then for that angle and then the cliff corner? That is not in the proposal. So if we approve this this evening, that is not in the proposal and there is no, no guarantee of that. Yeah. Could I, could you make it a condition? I can't change, as okay. the city attorney told Donovan, we cannot change your proposal, all right? Um, as someone who has an eight foot water line um, that I keep dripping because it has frozen on me several times, um, no, I don't have faith in, in six feet. Um, and we have, we have several wonderful companies in town uh, that make their living in the winter following out private lines. And while I am all for um, in, encouraging business development in the city, um, this is not the way I want to do it. Um, You're an experienced individual and, and you have been um, doing work in, in the city for quite a while. If you were, if, if we approve this this evening, you can certainly sell this lot as an approved lot. And then there is no hold about whether or not we would have insulation of, of whatever kind. So from my perspective, um, as, as only as only one one vote, I cannot set the city up for that potential problem. Um, and so, um, while I, I grant that that you would have the potential to have several properties on this, you have made a choice to make three lots instead of however many, and you have submitted what you've submitted. Um, I I do have a problem with the line and when I'm looking at the engineering report, it does not say six feet. The estimated service line depth is four to five feet at its highest point. He's guessing, I sent, I have stuff from my engineer I sent him that shows the exact connection of the Y. He's- That's inaccurate. That's not right. And that's we, been- We do accept the six two as a valid number. Six, six two. Point two. Correct. Point two. Um, that's an important clarification for the record. I'm, I'm glad you right. raised it. And and. Yeah. And you may certainly make that clarification. And that's within the, the crown, you know, at the crown of the road. So, you know, at the edge of the road, it's going to be less. I understand that. Okay, are there other comments of the Planning Commission? Uh, yes, Donovan. Um, can I address a, a question to you, Commissioner Miller? Um, I found it contradictory. Your findings of fact um, are for adoption of a, you know, a denial due to the fact that there's a not, you know, not conformance with city standard. So do you want to adjust your findings of fact or adjust your motion to, to uh, perhaps find new findings of fact or just, or? As, as I heard <clears throat> Mr. Miller's motion, it was, he was modifying what you had written on here to make new findings of fact. And, and he, Mr. Miller, did you require Make an additional requirement? The two findings of fact. Okay. Yeah, for and, approval. And what are those findings, sir? Conditions. Oh, I'm sorry. Those were two conditions of the approval, right? Um, I'm sorry. Did I yeah. not make the proper motion? <laughs> no, it sounded to me like you were adopting the findings of fact. Oh, which, no. Which right above are actually contrary to what you're proposing. I see point. what you're saying. Adopt Just the findings so of facts clear. for approval. Yep. I see what you're saying. Yep. No, I, let me. Um, I, okay. Do I have to withdraw that or do I have to clarify it? 
Madam Chair, um, may I make a comment, please? The uh, commissioner's motion was perfectly understandable for approval, as I understood it. No, Is that it was correct? not, sir. No, it was not. He is adopting findings of fact. The findings of fact are very clearly stated here for denial. What he is saying, and what I believe Mr. Miller wishes to do is, and I'm going to ask him to restate his motion very clearly, was to approve the request with two conditions. Yes, that's what I would like to do. I, I apologize and I'll make it and that's very what clear. I heard, Madam Chair. So I didn't but, want it to get confused. Yep. Yeah, so let's uh, make it clear. Um, I would like to recommend that the Planning Commission approve the proposed minor subdivision uh, on the portion of the existing lot located at the intersection of Broadway Avenue and uh, 232nd into three lots with the following two conditions. One, successful completion of the lot line adjustment and two, satisfy the techno technical requirements for completing the service uh, for insulated sewer line at a minimum of six foot depth. Recommendation. And that, that does not have any insulation. Oh, I'm sorry. Sir. Recommendation to council for approval. Right, I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, I see that. That's right, because we're recommending it to council. Is that okay? It, do you have that second? Yep. I had the second. And I'd second, you know. All right. I would request an amendment because you do not, since you are re approving this, I believe that you also need to meet the other technical recommendations of the city engineer with respect to driveways. You're going to need to meet the requirements of the watershed district. So, so those things need to happen for us to have a valid and appropriate subdivision. It'd be a, you know, it'd be a full, a full motion to address other city concerns. Yes. I mean, it's simply a recommendation. Council can, of course, you know, uh, approve with their conditions as well. Um, there's also the additional one that um, the engineer um, say that he desired that a uh, you know lot lot number one have a um, document um, recorded with the deed that um, the sanitary sewer line um, is subject to you know freezing to freezing in the winter time. So would uh, something as to the effect of any other conditions, city engineer and city council recommend? Would that be something that covers all of that? Or do I have to specify everything individually? Well, it, I believe that that would be appropriate. Okay, let's try this again. Is that okay? Sure. All right. <clears throat> Karen, are, are, you, are, you, are you okay with, are you keeping up here? I'm going to have to watch it back, but go ahead. <laughs> All right. Good. All right. Um, I recommend that the Planning Commission approve the proposed minor subdivision to the City Council. Uh, um, um, approve to the City Council. Recommend to the City recommend Council. Recommend to the City Council. Approval the, of. Approval of the the proposed minor subdivision on the portion of the existing lot located at the intersection of Broadway Avenue and 232nd Street into three lots with the following conditions. One, successful completion of the lot line adjustment. Two, satisfying all technical requirements for completing the service for insulated sewer line at a minimum of six foot depth. And three, any other conditions uh, city engineer and city council recommend and watershed district recommend. Are you willing to second that? I, I second that. All right, is there any further discussion? Karen, could you please call roll? Commissioner Young. No. Commissioner Batty. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Keene? No. Commissioner Brink? Aye. 
Go forth. Can I be here with, with her? We have, um, I'll let her come up here for this. She's an excellent idea. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is 4535 232nd Street, a zoning map application. Donovan, could you please walk us through this? Um, I'd like to, um, Madam Chair, I'd like to um, say that the, the 435 232nd Street variance application um, has been withdrawn in, in, in writing. I was notified in writing earlier this week. Okay. And a, number nine. Okay. Just for clarity. So the variance application has been withdrawn. Correct. All right. So we will move on to item number 10, 4535 232nd Street, and it is a zoning map application. Come on down. So <laughs> we're going to make it easy on you. So um, this is some, something of a, you know, a little bit of a story here. Um, and uh, involves Ms. Stacy Novak, Novak, the applicant. Um, she lives at 4535 232nd Street. Um, back in last November, or like it probably been in October, when I was, um, Mr. Smith had proposed a zoning map amendment, I reached out to Mr. No Ms. Novak, um, hoping that she would join, the, join the, with the zoning map amendment. And I didn't get a response from her. And so we didn't, um, we weren't going to zone a property without your permission. And rezone it to um, from the B2 to the, the MXR1 from the commercial to the residential. Um, so it, it, at one point when it looked like um, we we're trying to save a shed and that's, that was going to be the, you know, the variance application, um, you know, changing this property from residential from commercial to residential meant that that structure setback went from 35 to 10 feet. Um, that seemed like one one good reason to do it. Another good reason is that um, the single family use on this property is is not conforming with the B2 commercial district standards. Um, and that really had a practical impact where if you had applied, for instance, for a house addition, uh, maybe another, you know, expand a, a detached um, st structure, um, the city wouldn't have been able to allow it. Um, so in this case, and I, and I don't know why it was included in the B2 commercial district. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's part of the, the quarter quarter, that which, which is Mr. Smith's larger property. Um, and it's just one little corner that was carved out at some point. I'm not sure the history on that. Um, so in this case, it seemed like it was, we could, we, the city could do the right thing. So we sp sponsored the, uh, the zoning map amendment to change the property from B2 highway commercial to MXR1 um, single single family and townhouse residential mixed residential single family and townhouse, um, and um, the, the finding facts um, do support the, um, the this that it will not adversely affect nearby property values and and it will eliminate a non-conforming use on the property, and thus allow the expansion of a single family home which would not have been possible in the B two commercial district. Um, and so in this case, um, plan commission, I mean, staff recommends to the plan commission to adopt the findings of fact and recommend to city council change the zoning district of 4535 232nd street from B2 highway business to MXR1 mixed residential single family and townhouse zoning district. That I'm happy to take any questions from the plan commission. Are there any questions of Donovan from the planning commission members? Ms. Novak, um, I believe that this is something that you wish to do. Yes, ma'am. I had wanted to make sure that it wasn't commercial anymore, that it was residential, because I believe my tax, I've been getting overtaxed on it, too. Very good. We do have a public hearing slated for this this evening. I don't see anybody <laughs> here except you who would be interested in speaking at the public hearing. Karen, do we have anybody online? Who is indicating they would like to speak at the public hearing? I do not. Can you open it officially and close it? Yes. 
Sorry, it's been a really long day. I hope, Paul's having, a good, I hope Paul's having a good time in his family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am officially opening the public hearing. I do not see anybody here in the room. Karen, one more time, do you see anybody online who would be interested in speaking to this public hearing? Commissioner Young, I have no one who would um, be willing to speak. Last chance, going, going. I'm now going to close the public hearing appropriately. Planning Commission members, do you have a motion? Um, I'll make a motion to adopt the findings of fact, uh, recommend a city council to change the zoning district 4535 232nd Street from B2 Highway Business to mix residential single family townhome, townhouse zoning district. Is there a second to that motion? Second. That was Mr. Keene. Is there any discussion of the motion by the planning commissioners? Karen, could you please call roll? Commissioner Young. Yes. Commissioner Batty. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Keene. Aye. And Commissioner Brink. Aye. You have been approved and by the Planning Commission and it is our recommendation to the City Council that this also be approved. Now there are a couple of steps after that because it's a zoning change and it has to be approved by the Metropolitan Council. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I would not expect that they would have an issue with this. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Have a very good evening. Okay. Karen, I don't believe we had a council member on tonight's call, did we? Um, no, we do not. Donovan, do you have other items for us to consider this evening? Um, no, I would just um, state that we do have an agenda item for that, that July 28th um, council meeting. And if I can do a scramble, maybe we could talk about some more zoning stuff on that first planning commission meeting, but I don't want to commit at this moment. You know, on the, that would be the, Comp plan? The 14th. Zoning, the, the, the zoning code. Okay. Um, right. That's it for me. Yes, sir. I'm just curious is, you know, 217th seems to be coming up a lot. <laughs> um, and, and I'm just wondering if it would make any sense to sit down, you know, in discussions with the city and just, is there anything we can do to look at that road and, and what's going on down there to kind of figure out what the best solutions are? Because it seems like every application that comes in is looking for a variance on that road. I mean, and they say if you're going to, you know, be granting variances all the time, you might as well change the code or the rules, right? I mean, and so we've granted, just since I've been on the commission, a number of variances down there. And I'm just wondering, is there anything we can do to look at that as a, as a city um, to kind of figure out the best solution for that. I mean, it was really hard tonight. I mean, and, and just, I'm going to be open and I know we're on the record, but it was really hard tonight not to, you know, give them suggestions to work with that. And I know we're not supposed to do that, but I mean, obviously there's a lot of things they can do to, to make that work without necessarily a 15 foot variance, but they may still need something. But, you know, Donovan, is there anything we can do about that? I mean, well, just to kind of meet and look at that whole area or is that nothing we can do? Um, I, I'm going to interrupt Donovan. Um, one of the problems is if we make that a city street, we're going to have to bring it up to city standards. And that is going to be one, very expensive, and two, there will be a property lost, all right, because we will require a <coughs> wider road. Uh, and we're going to need to bring it up to the standards that our fire department and you know everybody else would require. Um, so I think that it would be problematic for the area. One of the reasons that I have a real bias against private roads, and private water and private sewer. Yeah, and that's, and that's exactly my thought is, you know, it seems like most of the property on the, the, I guess be the north side of the road would have room to, you know, again, we would be, 
acquiring property, but it seems like we'd have room to make that road the proper width, especially for emergency reasons like fires and ambulances and, and service vehicles uh, versus the way it is now. I mean, I, and you know, I think it would be an improvement for those neighbors in some respects, and there'd probably be assessments, obviously, but uh, uh, I think it would be better for the city. I think it'd be better for them, and I think we could correct a lot of this variance nonsense. I, just a thought. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but that's what you're referring to is is, is the road because what I what, what I was hearing was just simply was there some there were zoning standards that could be like an overlay district or something something that would I'm kind of talking about both you know I mean the but road we, definitely needs something and uh, we need uh, some overlay standards I think for that road well it's it's uh, I mean because we could be we couldn't really be talking about the whole single family zoning district which right. is right circles yeah. of course like as well. Um, because that's that's that'd be a huge change, um, and the uh, of course this is in the Sherland Overlay District, so any kind of rules would also have to be um, somehow you know also get you know state you know couldn't couldn't be loose looser than you know, it would have to be as strict or stricter state standards. Um, but with the road, I mean, you're thinking like you know blue sky. If you put the you know re did the road. The north of all the properties, then you'd have, you know, really large properties, yeah. you know, really deep, and it would change, you know, it would change uh, the lot area, impervious surface, you know, um, reach those lots because we have to treat them as individual lots, um, and so um, you know, on both sides of the road, but you know, if you the road shifted north, which if you look in the old plat, the road did have a different location right. sometime along the way. I think it was planted in the 40s, or at least one portion of it. I think it, you know, it used to kind of dip southward somewhere. Um, and uh, I mean, that's that, you know, again, that that is 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 you know, Commissioner um, Young mentioned a huge cost and you know, benefiting obviously those those property owners. I mean, for the city, our biggest concern is more about the drainage. I mean. We talked about one drainage ditch being filled in um, between those properties, which is great. Dave could, Dave could, he just got out there and read the land, and then we went down the shoreland, you know, and the, you know the heart, the, the rocks, and Dave clawed away a few rocks, and sure enough, there was, you know, the the the, the town drain tile with concrete and corrugated pipe inside, which he knows, you know, from elsewhere in the city, you know, which, you know, he knew it was there, um, and. Uh, you know, when they think, you know, they, you know, city staff thinks that, that other ditches have been filled in. And that's, that's our biggest concern is that type of flooding. I um, mean, you heard tonight discussion, um, you know, you know, around the MnDOT and even they mentioned, you know, all the apartments being built north of 11th Avenue, you know, it's causing more impervious, more runoff, you know, the more uh, water flowing into the wetlands, thus, you know, aggravating, you know, Flooding issues, but um, if you talk, talk to city staff, they, they have a different view. It relates more to, and that's and that's our, you know, kind of, I would say, for our staff consideration. I mean, obviously beyond these, and you know, you're, you're correct that we've seen a few variances. Those mem members were here tonight, residents, um, but you know, many ways also that echoes, or you know where people are, are taking these, you know, you know, cabins, you know, homes for you know, used to be for just one household. Now they want to have for two households. Um, and it's mostly it's, you know, from one, two seasons to four seasons, you know, and um, but, uh, I don't know, there's no easy answers. To okay. Nothing right now, but when we get off of YouTube, I do have a question about 217th Street and the house that was built recently. Ready? I have nothing else. I will, I will I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, the applicant um, for the 7089 variance did appeal that decision last week. That'll go before um, council on the, in the first meeting in August. 
apologize for not being here. It was an opportunity for me to meet my daughter in Boston. I don't get to see her very often. And I don't think I've missed very many meetings. <laughs> so my apologies. Please tell us in the future. It's interesting. Yes. Uh, I had in, I actually intended to do it from, from Boston, but um, we ran into a problem. So. All right. With there no other further discussion, I hereby close the meeting. And the meeting is now ended. Oh, Karen, motion you can to shut adjourn. a motion to adjourn, please. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Karen, one last roll call, please. Commissioner Young. Aye. Commissioner Batty. Aye. Commissioner Miller. Aye. Commissioner Keene. Aye. And Commissioner Brink. Aye. Now I may declare the meeting closed. Thank you.